Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. A lot of times old French horns have loose valves and there are two ways valves can be loose. They can either be the loose up and down or they can be loose sideways. This video will be about how to tighten valves that are loose in and out. To see what the problem is, put the valve in, put the bearing plate on, and then tap it into place. This tool is a wooden dowel and it has a hole drilled out of it so that it can fit over the high spot on the bearing. That allows you to tap on the tool and have the bearing plate sit on top of the casing. Now you need to see how much gap there is, so take the valve and move it up and down. If you turn it over, you can see how much there is. Move the valve up and down and see how much gap there is. And make a mental note of how much there is. Now remove the valve by tapping it with a rawhide mallet. The reason this valve is so noisy now is I have dried up all the oil on the valve. The oil covers up some of the noise, so when you've removed the oil you can hear exactly what the problem is. This is a drawing of the French horn valves, and the black part is the casing, and that is this part of the French horn. And the blue part is the rotor bearing, or the bearing plate, and that's this part of the instrument, which goes on the casing. There are two different types of bearing plates. This one has a shoulder on it, and it rests inside and on top of the casing. This one does not have a shoulder on it, and it rests inside the casing, and there's a notch cut in the casing that this fits into. The valve goes inside of the casing, and when it goes up and down inside of the casing, that means the gap between here and here is too large. If you look at the rotor and the bearing plate, you can see where it makes contact. It's in the middle right here, and that makes contact to this part of the rotor. So when there's too much gap and this does not make contact, and the valve goes up and down inside of the casing, you need to lower the bearing plate down onto the valve. You do not want to go too far because then the rotor will get squished inside of the casing and it will not function well, but you want it to be right down on top of the bearing. The way you do that is by filing down the shoulder of the bearing plate. To show you how that's done, I'm going to erase this and draw the bearing plates here. Here are the two bearing plates. The metal you want to remove is the black part, and you do that with a small file. And on the other one, you remove it right here. I'm going to be working on this one today, but the method is almost the same on both of them. Here's the small file that I'm going to use, and you want to be very careful just to get the black part. Do not get the blue part, because that will make the bearing plate loose inside the rotor and it will fall out easily. This file does not have much grit to it, because I do not want to take off a lot of metal on this, just a little bit. I also want to be very careful just to file down the shoulder, or the black part of the rotor bearing, and not to file down the side of the rotor bearing. So on this file, one of these sides has some grit to it. You want the smooth side of the file to line up to the side of the bearing plate and not the grooved side. You'll need a bench motor or a lathe to do this job because you want it filed smoothly and evenly. And put it into the bench motor. You want it to be square on there so that it files down evenly. Take the file and file just a little bit. Just like that much. And now put it into the French horn and see how much gap there is. Put the valve and the bearing plate in and then tap it on. Then see how much gap there is. I probably need to take off about the same amount, maybe even a little more. And usually you need to do this job, oh, probably four or five times before you finally get it. And you want to be careful. You do not want to go too far. You'd rather do it several times than go too far. I filed it down four times, and now this time there's almost no gap in it. What you do next is put the cap on it, because when you put the cap on it, it pulls down the bearing just a little bit tighter than it usually is. And with the cap on it, it should be about right. Now there's almost no up and down motion. Now it does go side to side still, and that's what's making the noise. But up and down, uh, there's almost no motion. However, I am going to file this down just a little bit more to show you what to do when you've gone too far. I've gone a little too far, and the valve does rotate, but it, it turns a little tightly. If you've gone just a little too far, the job is easy to fix. I'll show you how to do that. This is a jeweler's anvil, and it's a very flat, smooth piece of metal. Take some 600 grit, very fine grit sandpaper, and put it on there, and then do that. Turn it around, 
and do that a few times. That will smooth down the bearing surface and because you keep rotating it a little bit as you go it will sand smoothly. Now try it again and see if you've gone far enough or if you go, need to go a little farther. Now it rotates but there is a little catch in one spot so I am going to sand it down just a little more. That should do it. This valve spins well and there's no up and down motion to it. So this valve is done, at least up and down. It still needs to be worked on side to side though. But that is for another video. So look in the description below for a link to that video and other rotor videos. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.